question. All righty, so uh, thank you for joining us for our June 23rd COAC membership meeting. Um, just a quick agenda update. So basically, um, we'll do, uh, this is the welcome, welcome. Uh, and then we will do our, um, just kind of what we've been doing since, um, well, actually first we'll go into upcoming events. So we have a, we have an event in the next few weeks, but also some other things that I think that you might want to know about. Um, then we'll go into updates from COAC. And I have a couple of advocacy notes, um, some things that are going on that I want to make sure that you're aware of and see how it impacts you, if it impacts you. Um, and then also we'll have some updates from the floor. So that's the time of the presentation where if you have something to share with the group or with future viewers of this presentation, you can share it there. All righty. So first of all, um, tomorrow is the final listening session for the county commissioners. Uh, this time they'll be talking um, with members of the local supply chain, so suppliers of all sorts will be um, giving their testimony as to how COVID has affected them. Um, I was able to present last time uh, with the women business owners presentation, which was pretty fun. Um, it, for me, it was more interesting to hear the testimonies of the people of the business owners and kind of hear what uh, hear anecdotes about what we know from data has been happening to folks during COVID. So it was also great to hear from a programming standpoint, as well as just an advocacy standpoint to see um, real time how we might be able to assist business owners. Um, but if you're interested in attending that, you can, um, the Zoom information is there on the screen, take a screenshot. And also we'll be sharing this presentation after the fact. Um, but it is, um, it's a good opportunity. So the commissioners weren't on the called the last time, but the county administrators were. Our administrator, Ken, oh, I forgot his last name. Um, Ken was on, but then also like some of the deputy uh, administrators were on as well. Um, so it was a good time to talk to people who are in uh, positions of power as far as how contracts are being lit, the kind of resources that are available from the county. Um, and uh, so it's a cool thing to listen into. It's open to the public. Um, so that is, uh, that'll be the last one that they have told us about so far. On June the 7th, we have Blackout Day. Um, Blackout Day 2020 is an initiative that uh, we support, I support uh, for sure personally, but on July 7th, there's been a call to action to have um, that, uh, a call to action that no black person spends a single dollar on July 7th. And with the idea of um, trying to demonstrate real time what our economic power is by not spending. Um, my side note to that, uh, you can see on the bottom of the screen, um, if you have to spend money, try to buy black. Um, you know, we don't have to, uh, I mean, I'm, obviously I, I understand the, the boycott mentality, but I also wanna encourage people as in every single chance I can to buy black. Um, so that's why uh, sincerely collect management, that's me. Um, so yeah, if you have to spend money, buy black. But to learn more about Blackout Day, the organiz organizers of it and kind of uh, the, the thought process behind the initiative, visit blackoutday.org. Our next upcoming event is Out with Elected Officials. We mentioned it on our last uh, Zoom meeting, uh, but we have shifted the date back to give us a little bit more time to plan and also to do some marketing for it, right? Um, so registration is open now. Um, this, this will be a cool opportunity to get together and um, It'll be very different than it ever has been. Um, so we're doing this via Zoom, um, where we'll come together and we'll go into breakout rooms and you'll have a chance to interface with different elected officials and people who are running for office. Um, the registration link is there, but I'm going to think, I'm going to figure out in a, I'm not as techie as I could be, forgive me. I'm about to figure out how to put that link in the chat one moment. Um, but yes, yeah, so I hope that you all can join us. Um, so that's in two weeks, uh, two weeks from tomorrow. And we'll be doing that um, in partnership with the um, Diversity Chamber of Central Ohio. We're also, I believe that NABO is participating as well as um, we're in conversations with the Hispanic Chamber. What the idea every year is just to have as many um, different business voices as possible in the room. Cool. So uh, I just put it in the chat, the Zoom link to register, and I'll also make sure that you have that link in your email um, that I send um, tomorrow. 
Sorry about my dog. She's barking at someone at the door. Um, okay, so uh, a couple other things that I wanted to mention. So we have, uh, I, told, I talked about this on the last um, meeting, but on June the 9th or the 10th actually, so right around the time of our last meeting, the city and the county opened up the new grant program uh, for people, for businesses that have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, with my work at the Columbus Urban League, I've been helping entrepreneurs complete the application. It is fairly painless and kind of simple. Uh, the key is that you make sure that you are eligible before you start the process. And so uh, we have shared this link and I will share it again. Hold on, I apologize, I'm trying to multitask. Um, but so they'll do um, grants up to $10,000 for uh, two different purposes. One is called the recovery grant and the other is the um, PPE uh, reimbursement grant. And so for the recovery grant, what you'll get, you can um, apply for up to $10,000 and it's working capital, payroll, utilities, um, rent, and uh, there's even space for some other, which is a little bit of flex, flex space that you can apply for these dollars. So you have to be, if you're in the city of Columbus, you have to be in a low to moderate income neighborhood. Um, and there is a mapping tool at this link that I'm about to drop into the chat um, where you can uh, just type in your address and see if, uh, which pool of money you're eligible for. If you're, with the, if you're outside of the city of Columbus limits, but within Franklin County, um, they'll be looking at your household income uh, to determine that you're low to moderate, uh, that you're a low to moderate income household. And so based on one of those two eligibility factors, you can apply for that loan, for the grant up to $10,000. Additionally, there, so I've mentioned the PPE grant, that is a reimbursement up to $5,000 um, for um, personal protective equipment, dividers um, in, store, in store spaces or in workspaces, um, different things that you'll need to make sure that your, your space is safe for yourself and for customers. If you've already spent money uh, since March 17th on those products, you can apply for reimbursement of 50% of the monies that you spent. And that is true uh, regardless of uh, your business address, as long as you're within Franklin County. Um, the, there have been, I wanna say probably over 500 applicants since the pool has opened, um, but the, the first round of review doesn't start until next week. Um, so there is still time to get your application in and try to get some of that funding. Uh, there's also a loan product available from the city and the county um, and you can use that actually i think it's a cool product it's called the pivot loan you can use it to expand or to pivot into different lines of business and the city and county will cover half of those costs or loan you money to cover half of those costs um, and their their low interest the city's loan interest is one percent in the county i don't remember what it came down to it's between one and six percent um, but still, when you're talking about um, getting the cash flow to, to change lanes a little bit or to expand what you're talking about, so maybe you have something that was typically face-to-face, -face, you can now go uh, virtual, uh, utilizing different kinds of software, um, thinking about creative ways that you can um, expand. So um, it's definitely worth taking a look at if you haven't already. And back into the presentation for me. Okay. Um, the... Since the last meeting, a rep from Abercrombie and Fitch has reached out to us, and I'm just giving you a teaser here, so there's no follow-up information um, yet. Uh, so what he wants to do, he was trying to figure out how he could contribute. Everybody's kind of trying to figure out how they can help with equity, right? And so the gentleman from Abercrombie and Fitch reached out, and we had a cool conversation where they have this amazing warehouse full of stuff. And in this warehouse, it's like from... Abercrombie and Hollister from around the world, they have different kinds of products and they're interested in donating. And so the stuff is like store fixtures, um, but it includes LED lights, um, the light fixtures, rugs, tables, um, even wallpaper. Like he just, sent, he just sent me this list today. So I didn't even know the fake trees in there. Um, but if you're trying to like uh, spruce up or like do something cool with your, um, whether it's a storefront, a uh, hair salon, um, or even an office space, he's trying to donate it straight, just straight to you. And so the key that they say is that you can't get this stuff to resell, even though apparently there might be some business opportunity there for a wholesaler where you can buy it from them at a lower cost and then go sell it market rate. Um, but at the, at the start, he just wants to donate it. 
So um, more details will follow. We're gonna start with COAC members and people who are on our directory and then just kind of do a, a wide call to different retailers um, because this stuff is in pretty great working condition. They just, if they decide to change the store layout, they just buy new stuff instead of going to their own warehouse and repurposing it sometimes. So um, there's, there's a cool opportunity for that. So stay tuned. All right. Um, okay, so we are now officially over 100 members. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, for those of you who know, we've been at around like 80 members forever. Um, so I'm very, very excited to announce that. Um, side note, everybody's not on the website yet because between all of the new members and all of the new directory people, um, I'm a smidgen behind. Um, so luckily we've, we've got a couple interns. One just started last week and another starting this week. So um, the second will be tasked with vetting. Um, that gets to the next part. We'll get to vetting um, people who've been on the list for over a year. And then also as we're getting this, the new people in, we'll, we're gonna do real time checks just to make sure that all the information that we're getting and putting up on the site is accurate, um, as accurate as possible. And so we're gonna use this young energy that we're getting from, from um, our teenage interns to help with that. Um, but I want to pause um, and see who do we have here today on our Zoom. And if you're a member, hold on, how can, for the members who are in the room or even non-members, um, if you, I would love it, especially if, you, uh, actually I just want everybody, if you want to take a couple minutes not even that. Mm -mm. I, I take the minutes part back. Uh, like 30 seconds. <laughs> um, I would love for you to introduce yourself and um, what your business is, what you do, um, and how people can reach out to you. Put that in the chat and or say it uh, here if you're comfortable with that. And um, no pressure, but he should know he's starting first. Um, we're going to start with Anthony McIntosh, who is the treasurer of the COAG board. Um, <laughs> and Anthony, please introduce yourself. Uh, hello, my name is Anthony McIntosh. As Avery mentioned, I am the treasurer of the board. I've been part of COAC and the board since we started up again. So glad to see that we've hit that 100 number. We have been, that's been a goal for a while. Uh, I head up a strategic business advisory and consulting firm by the name of SSC Advisors. I uh, have been doing that since 2016. Uh, glad to see all of you participating and look forward to having you all participate more often and frequently. Thank you. Uh, who, who would like to go next? There are only like seven of you right now. So um, I'll pick somebody. I can, I can unmute you from here. I'll go next. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Cheney Scott. Um, I actually don't have my own business, but I am heavily involved with my church. Um, and so I'm always trying to look for new resources and tools that can help us grow as well. But what I do for a living is I'm uh, AVP of Outreach and Recruitment for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central Ohio. Um, and we serve Delaware, Franklin, and Union counties. And, and I met Jay, um, Avery a couple of years ago. My dad used to work with his, uh, her mom. And it's, um, it's just been a pleasure getting to know her and all that she's trying to do here in Columbus, Ohio. So I just want to be a part of it. Hey, thanks. Thanks for being here. Uh, Talithia, I know I owe you a call. Also, side note, I'm going to call you tomorrow. It's okay. I'm okay. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Talithia Johnson. I am founder of Children Rise 21st Century. I'm here for the higher education. I'm ready to get the kids back into school um, on a different level. Um, altogether different in the urban area. I have been working on this for about four or five years. So, um, I think this is the time just in my capital part of it, um, looking to get into the old, old libraries that hasn't been used and just doing kindergarten through um, third grade, higher education for gifts and special needs. Yeah. 
I just joined recently, so I'm happy to be a part. I actually met Avery at the Urban League when I took my classes there, and I've just been moving forth ever since, so happy to be a yeah. part. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, let's see. There are a few people in here who I, I have not met just yet, uh, but Kina, uh, would you mind sharing about um, well, a, who you are and about your um, nonprofit? All right, we'll come back to her. Um, let's see, we have Afia, Tina, and Janelle. Um, welcome. Hi. Hello. How are you? Thank you for being here. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Tina. Uh, Hold up, pause. There's it's like, uh, when I was on the site and I got it and here. Can you uh, begin again? It's like uh, staggering. My internet. Yeah, so we'll talk to me. So my name is Tina Yangesa. I'm an investor, a real estate investor. And you know, the reason why I signed up for the Zoom call and uh, just going on the website was just to gather information and see if I could support vendors that um, were, you know, asking to apply. <laughs> I believe you. I believe Tina said she is a real estate investor and is here to uh, learn more and to uh, maybe learn about some new vendors. And yeah, cool. Gotcha. Thank you for being here. Um, Afia. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Afia. This is my first meeting. Um, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak a little bit. So I actually um, have. Um, have been working with Anthem, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, an insurance company. Um, I don't currently have a nonprofit. I would love to get involved. Um, and honestly, I saw this, I have had um, this, uh, I've been part of, I think I'm a member, I believe I am. Um, this is like my first meeting and I just wanted to join because it was online and it was easier to join than um, in person. So I, I just want to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much for being on today. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Ms. Jernell? Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jernell Logan, and I'm actually driving right now. I just uh, came from a workout. <laughs> but um, I am uh, part of Esther Community Ministries, a nonprofit. Um, we are we work with um, a housing development in on the east side of Columbus as well as we're looking at expanding. Um, I'm also in the military, so I get a chance to uh, serve our country each and every day. And I also am a newly um, a new insurance agent, so I do a little I do a little of everything I'll say. <laughs> but I am so happy to have been able to get on this line. I get the newsletter, so I got I saw the Juneteenth edition, and I got an opportunity to sign up and register for this meeting. And I appreciate um, just being able to come on to this line. And thank you so much for allowing us to introduce ourselves too. Well, for sure, and thank you for being here, and thank you for your service. Uh, just can't say that enough. Miss Kina, would you like to uh, introduce your your nonprofit? Alrighty. She did put her information in the chat, Avery. Perfect. Thank you, guys, because I do not see the chat. Thank you very much. Got you. Perfect. And I'll make sure to share that with the group in the follow-up email. Alrighty. Back into the presentation. Um, so I know um, a lot of you, if you're following, you know that um, we have been raising money for businesses that were impacted originally and um, the protest downtown and so uh, just I wanted to provide an update you know for accountability and transparency sake 
Um, we have raised about $14,000. As soon as I get on our website, I'm gonna pull the link um, for, the, for that fundraiser. We're not um, raising any more for that endeavor. And the reason is um, we're, we've already given out 6,000 um, to, to three of the businesses that have been impacted. And there are three more that I'm trying to get my hands on. Um, and so that we can give them um, 2,000 each. And then um, do the divvy across all, uh, divvy up the rest across all six. Um, the reason that I'm saying um, we're gonna stop the fundraiser, at least pause it for now, is um, because I wanna direct you to their independent fundraisers. Um, each of them have their own things that are happening. Um, and I know that sometimes for morale, that feels almost better to get the money from a bunch of people through your, the channel, the fundraiser that you're doing. Um, but I know that the funds that we've divvied out have been much appreciated. Uh, as we understand uh, what long, longer lasting um, needs they have, uh, we may reopen that just to, um, to kind of help push the ship along. Um, but then also we're looking at uh, other kind of, uh, another initiative to raise dollars. And I wanna um, put some more structure around the, the process before we really go after some of that money. Um, but a lot of people who donated have just been wanting to give for businesses in general, um, just to black businesses, period. And um, I want to have a mechanism in place for how we give that money out. Um, I don't necessarily need to be the only person that is making the decisions. The first six businesses were easy. Um, they had a very real time. Uh, we could put our hands and see the impact that this, what happened to them on them. But for other folks, there are more wide ranging kind of criteria that we would want to look at. Um, have they been able to access funding or maybe the funding that they actually need uh, in the COVID times, but not just COVID times before that. We know that our businesses are historically under-resourced and a lot of times the financing has these unnecessary barriers attached to them. Um, so like if we could get small amounts of monies into lots of hands, what would that look like? How much could we give? Would it be a revol would it be a grant? Would it be a, a revolving no interest loan or a low interest loan? And so those are things that we have to talk out as a board. Uh, or sorry, I have to talk to my board about. Um, and I really value their advice. And um, and we need to put some parameters around this thing. So I hope that as we come back on the next meeting and future meetings, we'll have some more information about what that looks like. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that people had an update here um, as to what we're thinking about um, for, for those funds moving forward. Advocacy notes. All right, so we are, uh, we're an advocacy organization as well as a business membership organization and um, a resource provider to the business community. And so there are a number of things that are happening all over the place, um, but we know that our line is business. And so um, the things that I'm gonna talk about right now are business related, even though there are multitudes of things that we could talk about and we might open it back up after I turn off the screen share and turn off the recording, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so uh, first is uh, here on this, this um, on the screen is a screenshot or, uh, of a letter that went out to vendors for the state of Ohio on June 11th, 2020. Um, I copied it here and made it bigger for you, but I'm gonna kind of talk through it and our thoughts on it. And um, I'm not sure if we have anybody on the line right now who is a state contractor, um, but this will be, I will actually um, kind of want to hear from you about your thoughts on this just generally. Uh, so the gist. On the 11th, they got this letter that says that, um, you know, the state agencies have been directed to reduce expenditures um, due to economic conditions created by the COVID-19 pandemic. Because your organization holds a current contract to provide supplies or services to the state government, we seek your assistance in, in achieving this goal. And so, um, then it goes on to say the Department of Administrative Services is requesting that all suppliers reduce by 15% the rates offered through existing state of Ohio contracts. The requested reduction will cover all supplies and services procured through DAS contracts as well as any supplies and services awarded by an individual agency 
we are asking the reduced charges take effect no later than July 1, and that you show the reduced rate on any invoices for supplies or services provided on or after that date. I added the bold, just for clarification. Please send your response to this request, including the contract numbers associated with the response to this email by June 24, 2020. Your response will be taken into consideration as we make decisions on whether to renew or rebid contracts approaching their end date. If you are currently in negotiations regarding a contract or extension, please keep this request in mind as well. So um, basically the state gave less than three weeks notice for, for current contractors and potential contractors to reduce their, their rates by 15%. And if you know anything about state contracting or any government contracting, that reduction would just wipe out any sort of profit that you may have gotten and honestly would probably start eating into your pockets whereas you're offering these things almost um, at, you're not even breaking even to do the services. Um, from what we've heard from contractors, this is gonna hit them incredibly hard in the pocket. And I hope that they and anyone who is viewing this um, share their concerns with the email das.statepurchasing at das.ohio.gov. The deadline is tomorrow for these things, but I'm sure they'll get the emails after the fact. Um, but if there are anyone here who had any thoughts or any concerns that this raises, you can let me know uh, whether it's uh, here uh, in the chat, uh, you can unmute yourself and speak on it right now. Um, but also, we will be submitting a statement to this email address um, by close of business tomorrow. Um, I just, I have seen some reports and uh, just the, the things that we've heard, the timing of this is kind of unfortunate. And I do understand that the state has to cut costs. Um, but for the small businesses who are contractors um, of the state, um, this is going to be a burden to carry. Some people are honestly considering just giving up the contract um, because they can't, they can't um, offset those costs on, for the state. Um, so we just wanted to kind of talk about it and bring it up here because it's something that you should know about. Um, whether you're, especially I have some, we have some members um, and so I have some clients who are being affected by this because they were trying to bid on some, some MBE set-asides or they're trying to, uh, they have existing state contracts and they're, actually, they're having to make really tough decisions because sometimes <clears throat> we know that receiving a state contract can be a, a big deal. Um, but uh, this is, this is uh, putting an unnecessary and in my opinion, an unfair burden on, on these business communities. Um, so, did anybody have anything they wanted to say on this? And hopefully if you have a state contract or if you're thinking about state contracting, this wasn't the first time you've seen this. Um, I just received it uh, last week um, from a contractor who was kind of just like, is this even legal? Uh, my first response to them was, you need to check your contract um, and you can consult an attorney. Well, you guys are easy. Um, so that's a cool. Um, we can um, remember, you can email me, Avery, A V E R I, at coac.org, C O A A C C. You can also email, email team at coac.org. Um, please um, share this with anyone you know who is um, currently in contract or thinking about being in contract with the state. Just make sure that they. They have to respond because I believe that if you don't respond, um, they'll take that into consideration as well when they're looking at renewing your contract. Um, I feel like the verbiage was kind of threatening, um, as but you know that's just how I take it. Uh, but yeah, so if you have questions though, feel free to reach out and touch base with me. Um, moving down to the city level. Um, the mayor just announced that he's doing some address tomorrow. There has been uh, the emails that I received. There wasn't a, a topic of discussion, but if I had to guess, it would probably be about the protests that have happened uh, most recently um, over the weekend and the police response to it, as well as his own response to it. 
I'm not sure, but what I can say is that um, just like with the governor, when the mayor uh, does make these kind of addresses as a business owner or a business organizational leader, it's your responsibility to tune in just to make sure that if any, or to see if anything were to affect your constituents or your clients or your customers. Um, I don't, I would be very surprised if anything were being discussed tomorrow as far as the disparity study or the uh, set aside program that he has mentioned um, with the executive order but i would very highly recommend that you tune in on tomorrow at 1 p.m i'm sorry i'm laughing the notification came out like two hours ago um so just uh you can check it on apparently facebook live facebook.com backslash columbus gov and you'll be able to see the address from mayor andrew j ginther So now is the time where I up, open it up for updates from the floor. So if you have an initiative, you have an event, you have something that you would like to share with the group, um, now is the time that you can do that. Um, and you just unmute yourself, raise your hand or what have you, if you have anything you'd like to share. Hello, this is Janelle. Um, is there any like um, webinars on like any topics that include like um, insurance or any type of like long-term care, things like that, where, you know, you're dealing with finances, with health that um, are linked with the COAC website? Um, we don't have any scheduled right now, um, but we are always open to doing something like that, especially if it's um, gonna be beneficial to the membership. And so whether it's, if you had something that you wanted to share um, or you have something that you wanna hear, you just let us know. Great, thank you. Oops, yeah, no problem. Anybody else? You guys are making this easy. Oh, also, this is Janelle again. Also, um, I know I've heard um, information in the past, but is there a membership fee or um, what is it? How is it set up for someone who wants to be a member? Great question. Thank you for that. All right. So, uh, so yeah, to be a member, there is a fee associated with it. Uh, base membership for for profit businesses is two twenty five a year. Um, and that uh, provides access to um, a number of discounts and um, the uh, group ratings. So we have um, access to group ratings from Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield uh, for our businesses. We have different um, insurance products that we're now able to offer through Colonial Life. So a lot of the supplemental products um, that's discounts on print services, floral, uh, tax prep, bookkeeping. I know I'm forgetting some stuff. Oh, discounts on energy services. Um, Board members, y'all, uh, did I miss any of those benefits uh, for the base? I don't think so, yeah. And then on the, um, for nonprofits, the base level is $100 a year, which gets you the same um, information and our same access to those benefits. And then from there, uh, per level, you get an increased amount of benefits. So for instance, so that was bronze. For the silver, you're able to uh, get some business uh, coaching, um, four hours a year, which is basically like we break it up a quarter, we, meet like once a quarter and kind of help you work out a plan of action. Um, maybe some way that you're trying to leverage your chamber membership, different ways that we can help with that. Um, and then it, it just um, increases each membership level has more information. Um, all of our, uh, that is available on our website, coact.org. And you can even apply online and pay online for your annual membership dues. And your dues are due, uh, they come, they're due um, on an anniversary. So. Uh, your anniversary month. So if you were to join today, June 23rd, your uh, next uh, membership would be due June 30 of 2021. Um, but yeah, so if you check out our website, let me know if you have any additional questions. Um, if you happen to have already joined to be on our directory, but now want to be a member as well, I just uh, reduce your membership dues by the $25 fee that you have already paid to be on the directory.
Any other questions from the floor? Anything to add? All right, well, our next meeting is scheduled. So instead of two weeks, it'll be three weeks um, just because we have out with on July 8th. So on June, July 14th, we'll be back here at 5.30 p.m. to debrief on whatever has happened in the world um, affecting um, us as black people or as business owners. Um, and we'll uh, talk about what's coming up. And um, I believe on the 14th, we'll have a, a little presentation from our new partners, First Merchants Bank. Um, so if you're looking for another banking partner or uh, to increase your business banking relationship, um, that'll be a good opportunity to hear from another um, one of our banking members. And I believe that's it. The Zoom will follow. So if you registered for this meeting, you'll get the Zoom link as well as the um, the debrief or the, the digest of what we covered today. And if um, we'll also make sure that we share the link in, a, in our upcoming email blasts. So, um, and please, please, please encourage your peers um, or anyone else you know who might be interested in attending this to join us. Um, yes. Hey, Avery. Yes, sir. Sorry, I now drop this in the, uh, the link, but tomorrow the Columbus Metropolitan Club is having a, they're, they're beginning to create a series on racism. Uh, where do we go from here? And tomorrow they have uh, what they're calling the young black men speak. And that will include uh, people like Playon Patrick, Andrew Pierce. And like I said, they're creating a series. You can view this live on YouTube for free. So if you're, and it's from noon to one. So I think uh, I'm part of the Columbus Metropolitan Club. We're beginning to put some things together, but we're trying to build a series in terms of how do we start taking a real look at racism as, but more importantly, what are some of the solutions that we think we need to start building? So I will drop this in the, uh, the chat. I'm just trying to find the link for you, Avery. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody just put it in the chat for you. Nah, there it is. Beautiful. So yeah, like I said, it's 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 on YouTube. It's it's free. So go take a look and 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 let me know what uh, type of feedback you have. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. And um, definitely, if you have time, take your lunch break then because um, play on is an amazing poet spoken word um i've gotten a chance to hear him a couple of times um during the mlk oratorical contest and i'm always just like just go ahead boy he just he, yeah he's good he's so good um so yes thank you anthony and i definitely i'll make sure to add that to my calendar myself too all right cool so um yes thank you all for being here um this one was just short one of our shorter ones of the last couple months but that's not always bad when we all have a hundred things going on. Um, but thank you all for being here. And until next time, I'm gonna stop the recording now. Thanks, Avery. Thanks everyone.